Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us again on this beautiful day. This is live with the Higher Calling Fundraising Solutions. I'm Tony Thornhill. It's been a pleasure to be able to host this. Today's show is going to be fun for everyone. You should be able to learn something. I imagine that there's going to be a couple laughs, and we're just going to see where it goes, but pro I promise you will have fun listening to our guest. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring into the studio Scott Robertson. He is a benefit auctioneer galore out of Florida. He's currently not in Florida. He's doing his other passion. We're going to let him tell you a little bit about that. Welcome to the studio, Scott. Hey, Tony. Thanks for having me today. How's everybody? Fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, I feel a little underdressed here. I'm a little casual. So, uh, I, Like I mentioned in your intro, you're in a different location, so I kind of expected you to be in a casual situation. Why don't you tell us everybody about, uh, just real quick where you're at, and then we'll get into the fundraising side. Well, I've discovered a really fun job my, right out of college called whitewater rafting. And so I wanted to be, a, I thought, hell, I'll give it a try. Well, I'll be a guide. But I didn't think I'd actually make it. Well, that was 37 years ago. And my wife, Mary, and I have been whitewater raft guides in West Virginia ever since. Uh, we have a cabin here. This is the cabin behind me. It was actually originally built in 1794. 1794. Okay. I think Scott may have just paused for a second on us. We're going to. I think he may have just had a pause for a second. We're going to wait for just a second, have him come live, see what's going on. He's in the cabin up there. So that being said, I'll wait till he comes back on. <clears throat> One of the questions that we're going to be talking with Scott here in just a minute is understanding the, the virtual gala, the direction that it's going to go, and some odds and ends that Scott has come up with to be able to host these galas. He's been doing them now for about two and a half months. And when he hosts the gala, he's one of the first ones that pioneered, let's go out and figure out what to do. So today we're going to try to bring him back in in just a second, but I'm going to have some talk to him. While we're waiting, I do want to let you know that if you're watching on Facebook Live, we will be allowing for comments and questions. Feel free to type them in. We'll get to you as soon as possible. So we're going to be just sitting here waiting for just a minute for Scott. He just seems to have dropped off there. We'll come right back. <clears throat> let's talk as we get started. Let's talk about what's happening in our fundraising world on, on my side. There have been auctioneers across the country and auction platforms along with different types of technical, audio, video, a lot of people that are coming together to say, how can we help nonprofits? It is not fair to say that nonprofits are standalone in a time when people are not being able to, to function. Nonprofits, the needs that the nonprofits serve do not go away. Therefore, when they do not go away, how do they maintain? Well, in this situation that we're in now, currently, as many of you know, there, there has been a restriction that says you can't be in person and, and have an event. But that's where the auctioneers, that's where the, the software, that's where everybody has come in and has stepped up and said, hey, we want to help these nonprofit organizations. We're going to have you come in and we're going to do a virtual. They're just as powerful when done correctly. All right. Scott, I don't know how we're going to do it. And there, they are definitely an interesting aspect. All right. Give me just a second. We're going to see if we can get Scott back in here. Okay, so Scott's having some technical difficulties. We will get this taken care of in just a second. He's trying to get back with us. He just texted me and let me know. <clears throat> so, 
So let's talk while we're waiting on Scott to come back. The elements that are still valuable in that virtual auction. There's still the need for the fun to need. There is the need for a potential live auction. There's a need for the silent auction. There's ways to do all of these that come in. We're looking at listening, and we, we understand. Hold on just a second. I'm going to see if I can get Scott. Hey, Scott. Tony, uh, <laughs> my internet's not that bad here. <laughs> well, I'm going to hope that people can hear what you're saying, and we'll talk through this uh, for right now until maybe you do get a chance to hit that internet and come back up. Again, yeah. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking to Scott Robertson out of Florida. He's currently in his West Virginia cabin where he has many, many years of experience. And and I've understood, I've talked to him on several occasions, and he's had many ideas for fundraising come together while he's on the raft. So we're going to talk about that a little while. Scott, I was just telling the audience just a minute ago that you are have been one of our pioneers in the virtual gala. What would your what was your first experience with the auction? Well, that's a great question, Tony. And I got to tell you, you're talking about working uh, by the seat, flying by the seat of your pants, uh, working without a net, and most importantly, working without a roadmap. I mean, nothing. Uh, when I saw that we were gonna, when I saw COVID nineteen coming down the pack, and how devastating I thought it was going to be to charities. I jumped in in late February, not knowing if I was really going to need the information or not, but I knew I had to get started. And it was just through figuring things out, a lot of creativity. And then all of a sudden came the moment of truth. Well, God, got it. And then the moment of truth came up and we, we were, we had great success. We raised almost as much as we did the prior year. And it was, it was quite exciting. Well, I know for a fact I watched that with you while you did that, and I was amazed at the interest and how you maintained your professionalism through the whole the whole event. Let's talk about the planning for that, because obviously that was an immediate switch. What was the planning like to try to figure out how to make an event even go virtual at that point? Well, I guess... <laughs> And it was working without a net and working without a roadmap. So it was just, I was thinking, what elements can I apply from the traditional gala? And what elements will we need to the virtual gala? And, of course, you know, the big thing for us, Tony, as fundraising auctioneers, is we're so accustomed to working in front of audience. Right. right? Absolutely. We, we, we get a lot of energy from the audience. Uh, we, we know if we mispronounce a word pretty quickly. Um, but there's immediate feedback, and when you're working in front of a camera, uh, there is no immediate feedback. You just have to hope that what you just said is working. Right. So uh, that was, a, you know, that was a whole lot to it. I also uh, figured out that you know you don't want to take too long, and you want to get to the money uh, right away. And I was lucky enough to pair up with a great production company, Harmony Audiovisual, out of Fort Myers, and. We worked through it together and had a lot of phone conversations, a lot of dialogue. And then when we did the run through, we found some more things and it, it, it worked. That's what I can tell you is it worked and it's continued to work. And I think what we did at first, there were there had been a couple of others a couple of days before. And what we did at first has sort of become the standard for how people are doing virtual galas now. So that's kind of uh, exciting. Right. So on now that you've done several of them, what are what are some things that you can tell the organizations that they need to look out for for these what what's different so to to, to start with for these virtual galas? Well, the people out there are probably going to chuckle and say, "Oh, that's not us." But the number one thing that people hosting a virtual gala need to do is make the decision they're going to do it and then jump in with both feet and realize there's going to be naysayers. You're going to be saying, 
I don't like it like this. This isn't how we want to do it. I don't think this will work. And give you lots of negative feedback. Politely show them your hand and push them aside. Because <laughs> you don't have time to think about what won't work. Right. All you can think about is what will work. And there's always people that are just dying to be in referee of life, if you will, saying, so they can say later, I told you so. Right. Well, and, if, and if it doesn't happen, then they just stay quiet. So <clears throat> I can just say, get the negative people out of the way. There's going to be some people on your board that are going to say, I don't like it. Well, none of us like it. Right. Right? We all want to do traditional galas. Virtual galas are not the greatest thing in the entire world, the most fun thing to do in the entire world for not you and I as fundraising auctioneers. But you know what? It's what we have to do to keep the charities afloat and to keep the money rolling in. Nobody's That's right. got a year of uh, donations stockpiled. They simply don't. So it's what we have to do. The other thing I would tell you is don't think about it as a stage performance. Think about it as a television performance because that's what people are doing, right? They're watching on their smart TVs. They're watching on their laptop. They might be watching on their, uh, on their mobile phone. Right. But they're accustomed to seeing a television show, a broadcast, not a stage production. So you have to remember that you're not, as the auctioneer, you're not doing a stage production. Right. You can't walk, right? You've got to stay on your ass. That's right. You've got to stay on your mic. So those are a couple of things. Right. I, I do want to point out that we've got some people watching us. If you're tuned in and you're trying to see why Scott's not on the screen, we've had some technical difficulties. I've actually talking to him on the phone. So if you see the phone bounce through, that's why. Um, but he is still able to hear your comments. If we type, if you put them on Facebook or YouTube, I'll bring them up to him and we'll go from there. One of the, okay, I think I'm back. all right, well, let's, if you come back, we'll get you in the studio visual as well, but we'll keep going like this until we see you. Uh, <laughs> okay. the, one of the questions that, that I have, I've been asked several times is how long is a virtual gala? When we talk about our live galas, our live events, things can happen in three to four to five hours. Virtual gala can't be that long. What do you? What have you found to be the ideal situation for virtual galas? Well, I think you, uh, from the time you go live, uh, I recommend 40, 30 to forty-five minutes. But you probably can do a pre-show uh, that can run. I think the reason everybody does 30 minutes is because that's what I did when we first started, just because I didn't know any better. Um, and so there's a pre-show of 20 to 30 minutes to get people to, to, to tune in. And then I think the live portion should be 30 to 45 minutes. And then I think you should have a post-show to just kind of let everybody kind of wind down a little bit. That's interesting that you bring up the post-show. Are you still engaging as the host there at, on the post show, or have you turned it back over to the educational director? How are you doing your post shows? Well, okay, I'm back. You will be in just a second. There we go. Welcome back, Scott. All right. I'm going to hang up the phone so we don't have an echo. Perfect. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, That's okay. But the post show, you you know, the post show can be, uh, you know, pre-recorded on what you do. And if you've got a silent auction that you're planning on closing down later on in the evening, you know, you can come in and do little snippets in and out. But for the most part, it can be an entertainment component. It can be uh, usually an entertainment component. But right. something so that you don't, you know, you get them going, going, hey, give me your money. You, they give me <laughs> money and you say, thank you. Boom. <laughs> You know, we don't want to be the teenager. We don't right. want to be the teenager. Dad, can I have some money? You hand them the money and they're gone. You right. don't want to be the teenager. So that's funny that you say that because I had not had that perspective of, of seeing the teenager come in, but I just got that open hand, here, Dad, help me kind of thing and be gone. So let's talk about a, some of the events that you've done. There's obviously a lot of similarity in the way that you present uh, between each one. Have you found that there's a specific way that 
you address that you've had to change your stage presence to fit the camera? Yeah. Number one is don't move, which I brought up earlier. You know, put your foot on the spike tape and stay there so that you stay in frame. That keeps your production studio also from having to have a camera operator that's going to follow you around. Right. Right. So be steady. Nobody wants to watch anybody doing this. We exactly. may think it's quite entertaining, but it just looks awkward. The, so, the, only, the only person that I think that we would like to watch doing that is our buddy Chad Carvey, where he's actually floating around the world. And, you know, his his video is probably going to do that naturally. But shout out to, to Chad just because it's fun. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about the the elements of the, the virtual gala. You're still doing a fun to need, fun to future, special appeal, just as you would in a live event. But have you found that there's a different response or a something that organizations should be aware of for the fun to need through a video camera as opposed to on stage? Well, the main thing is they need to do the work ahead of time. You know, you don't need a huge committee to put on a virtual gala, but the people that you do have on staff at your charity need to work about twice to three times as hard. Right. right? They need to have a, a focus. They need to have a plan and they need to execute that plan. Doesn't take a lot, but they need to be on the phone call. They need to add, they need to absolutely engage the board. The board needs to get on the phone. This is all ahead of the event asking right. people for pre-secured gifts. I call them uh, leadership momentum gifts, but it's really important that people understand this is a fundraiser and that's why we're doing this. That's, that's right. That's one of the things that separates well-produced, because I'm only going to do a well-produced virtual gala. I'm not going to do it look like it's just got slapped together. I know right. some people do, but I think the proof's in the pudding that well-produced fundraising galas are raising a lot of money. Uh, they look like they've just been slapped together to help the local PTA. Um, you're going to get minimum results, but the results that virtual galas are bringing in is, is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And, and you're working with organizations that are used to large dollars uh, amounts in their in their galas and and you're the perfect one i want to ask this question because with the virtual gala versus the live auction like we've been talking we know that there's a difference in the revenue generated generally it's not what do you see but in your in, in your events between what the live was and new and the new gala the virtual style how much difference have you seen in, in the amount raised? Um, well, you know, this could change too. This could change, but I think there's a there's a little bit of a honeymoon factor that we're going through right now that people want to Excellent help. Point. You know, and during the recession, you know, I was very active as a fundraising auctioneer then, and it seems like people didn't they didn't stop giving. They just reduced the number of charities they supported. So. Right. I think that's a, I think that's an important uh, thing to acknowledge. And you want to be the one that they support. Well, how right. do you do that? By having a great mission, by having a great track record. You know, hey, give us money doesn't work. Prove why you need the money and how their investment is going to make a difference in right. the lives of others. When you do that, now all of a sudden you're in the driver's seat again. Right. Uh, live auction items. And, you know, we have to keep in mind, too, that virtual galas are doing really well, right? Almost right. as much or more than they did before. And realize we're doing this at a time when the stock market is down. We're doing it in the middle of a pandemic and right. yet we're still coming out like we did in 2019 when we didn't have a pandemic and the stock market was roaring. I, I agree. So, you know, I think it's a, a big uh, and, and I don't you know, we have to keep in mind that the virtual gala, the traditional gala is a is a method. It's a tool to raise the money that we need. Right. right. But the real heroes are the donors and the people that are bidding and bidding things up. We can get them excited, but they still have to write that check. So that's right. always take care of your donors. That's that's a huge point. If nobody takes anything else out of this, remember, we got to take care of our donors. So one of the things that I, I'm curious to hear your input on is the next phase. Obviously, at some point, 
we are going to gather again. We That's just human nature. We want to be together. Do you see a system in the future that is going to go to the hybrid where we have the simulcast and the live gala together? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be how we evolve, you know, that when we can actually gather together and there's still going to be a faction of people who are still not going to want to gather together. That's you know, right. if you look at your own auctions, I know when I look at mine, what I see is the people who uh, give the most money, generally speaking, are also the people that are most susceptible to catching COVID-19 and having a real problem with it. Right. Right. And that's absolutely true. So they may not be ready to gather in large groups, but they might be willing to gather in smaller groups. And our friend Greg Caroga, he termed, and I always give him credit. I'm giving you credit, Greg. I always do. Uh, I got he, the proof. <laughs> he, he determined, or he he coined a term called the micro gala, and the micro gala okay. is where you're going to have house parties of ten to twenty people the people that you know, like, and trust, and you gather there and then you watch what I'm, can, you can give me credit for this, the hub, the right. hub is going to be the event where the auctioneer is most likely going to be. It doesn't have to be, but right. most likely going to be with the larger crowd. Now you can still hold micro galas and the auctioneer be in the studio. Right. That can still work as well. I, I think, I think you're absolutely right on that. And, and the reason that I ask you about the, what we're going to do when we go forward is because as stage personnel and, and stage personalities, we feed off the energy in the room. The crowd feeds off the energy in the room. Do you think that by going to a hybrid where we have simultaneous and online that we're going to lose some of that energy? Well, we've already lost the energy right? We've lost the energy in a virtual gala. It's the energy is all that you can muster within that room. Right. So I think having a smaller audience will enhance, will, will be able to enhance the energy that's already in the room. So consider the fact that our energy level is not much. Right. So anything that we can do will help to add to that. And, you know, even as, even if you have, even if the camera people are applauding for you when you need them to, that right. helps. Right. That helps. Well, you know, and, and and that's that was a, a good point because you've had you've had the galas, the virtual galas before they shut down everything completely. So you were able to have a crew in the room and then you've done them since where you're limited to the number of, of different people. And and you have there was a couple of them that I watched that your your crowd seemed like they were all there, but it was what'd you tell us, like 10 people at the most? Yeah. And I get that. The <clears throat> When we talk about the things that you do on stage, are you still vibrant, wearing your your different colored vest and, and supporting and, and still being part of the, the organization that way? None of that changes, right? Absolutely not. You know, you've got to be a showman. I mean, that's what we are. We're, we're showmen. That's right. You know, call us anything else and I'm going to tell you you're wrong. <laughs> or you're not doing a good enough job. You've got to be a showman. You've got to help people get excited. And that's just, you know, that's just, you know, that's step one, you know, right. as a fundraising auctioneer. You got to know the charity. That's step two, you know, and you got to know the charity well. And, you know, you got to know the hot buttons and you've got to know how they've responded. You know, charities are not working the way they used to either, right? right. Everybody's Absolutely. had to pivot. I need to know how they pivot. Uh, when I first the first virtual gal I did, I said I worked 10 times harder than I would have if it were traditional. And that was all done in eight days for the most part. Um, but now I think it's three to four times as, as hard that I worked that hard. But you know what? That's what we've got to do. Right. Because we've got to keep our charities afloat. You let's, know? Uh, let, let's unpack that just a minute um, because I've heard people say that uh, and – Nonprofit organizations, they can't just shake a magic wand and the virtual gala takes off. It doesn't happen. As nope. you mentioned before, if it looks like it's thrown together, your crowd knows that. When you say it's more work than if it were your live event, what else are you doing for your organization that has increased your workload? Sure. Well, I'm writing scripts, right? I'm 
putting together the production. I've turned in, you know, I, I think I'm going to quit calling myself an auctioneer and call myself a virtual auction coordinator. You know, Interesting. I'm the conductor. I'm the person that pulls all those elements together. Um, I, I work with the script. I work with uh, how the elements are going to, I work with the flow. And I do that even more so than I did at a live auction, which I did at the live auction, at traditional gala too. And I think we just dropped Scott one more time. This way, well, you can't have dead air time uh, at a virtual gala either. Right. You know, I mean, hell, I went off the air for a few minutes there. Well, uh, that's, that's what we expect. I mean, we have to learn the technical the technical side of what's to, to, to happen. And by the way, I know you're not doing it on purpose, but I appreciate you t testing my uh, on the fly skills of, of what I would do in a, in a situation <laughs> like this. Uh, so here's, here's the, the $64,000 and $2,200 question that Tony oh, wisely okay. loves to come up with. 60000 is plenty for me. <laughs> here's that question for you. If you had one thing that you could tell these nonprofits that are on the fence of whether to do a virtual gala or to cancel and go to next year. What is that one piece of advice you'd give them? <clears throat> You've got three options. You can cancel and have no money and lose your place in line with your charities. Two, you can postpone and hope that there's a better day on the horizon. There's not. It's not going to happen. It's just going to get more crowded. Or three, you can go virtual. And I will tell you this to all the charities that are out there. You should do it now. If right. you can't put your spring event, if you postponed it, you should just do it now. You're like, but Scott, it's summertime. Nobody has events in the summertime. Welcome to the new normal. Until now. Right. Because... Why didn't we do them in the summertime, Tony? Because vacation. everybody left. Right? right. Vacation. Who's going on vacation? Right. <laughs> people that are going on vacation are, are, are coming to a remote cabin in the woods like I am right now. And guess what? You still have internet. Right. And that, and that is so true. That is yeah. so true. All so right. You can certainly do that. So that's what I would do. And the other thing I would tell you, I'm just going to reiterate it because it's so doggone important. Make the decision to go virtual and don't look back. Drive. Drive. Don't question. Well, what if? Well, what if the Internet goes down? And what if we and what if and what? Shut up. <laughs> you need to raise money. You're right. You're absolutely Why right on that. Money working. You're, you know, you're, what if you're driving your car? Oh, I can't drive my car. I might get a flat tire. Because if I get a flat tire, it could be in the wrong spot. And then I right. just drive the car. If you have a flat tire, you'll deal with it at the time. Exactly. I bet your tire won't go flat. I bet you won't run out of gas. And I bet you'll raise money at your virtual gala if you have the right people coordinating it, like Tony Thornhill and myself. <laughs> I was just getting ready to say, as long as you don't throw it together without using some sort of professional because it's still important no matter what people want to say it's still important to have that professional presence uh, especially somebody that's trained in the fundraising looking at a camera looking on stage it's the same yeah. we've got to be able to know where we're at we're the experts we're the experts we just have to change our method of delivery that's right we have we've had a lot of fun here scott i i so appreciate you coming on you're one of my favorites I, I tell everybody that when I when I made a call decision uh, ten years ago to become a benefit auctioneer, I called you, and there were three questions I asked you, and you gave me the answers. And for that, I'll ever be grateful. Um, those questions, I don't know if you remember. Am I silly for thinking I can do this? Oh. Is there money out there, and will events like me? And your answer was yes, yes, and yes. So we went through it. I know you're in well, West Virginia you're now, good, and you're doing great things, Tony. I appreciate that. That that means a lot coming from you. You're in West Virginia now. You're you're still working with nonprofits and doing oh. everything. Let's put this let's put this in in a six month banister. Where do you where do you see yourself in six months? Are you still going to be smiling and and raising that money for organizations? Absolutely. I mean, we're making plans. I was just 
right before this, I was on a call with a group that's in February and we were making, you know, finalizing, you know, some plans. I, yeah, listen, the need is still there. And what we learned in the recession is that people will still give. As I mentioned, they just give to fewer charities. Right. But it's it's absolutely what we're going to be doing. Um, and people want to help. That's the big thing for a charity is realize you have a great cause. People want to help yeah, you. That's right. that's right. Allow them to do it. I crack up when I hear people saying, well, we don't want to ask because it's a tough time. If you don't ask, you'll get nothing. And then you'll understand what a tough time really is. Ask. Somebody else will ask. Because, Tony, have you ever done people favor after favor after favor? And you're like, yeah, well, I don't want to ask Tony anymore for that favor. And then they do something different. And you're like, why didn't you ask me? Exactly. I was still, that's right. I was still here to help. I had a broken right. Right arm. I didn't have a broken right arm. I could have right. still helped. Exactly. Well, Scott, this has been fun. We've had a lot of, a lot of good information from you, as always. I want to say thank you for joining us. And be safe out there on them whitewater rafting. I do want more time that we can have networking and when we get together to be able to raise the glass to you. Scott, on behalf of me and everybody else at A Higher Calling, we thank you, sir, and have a great day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is this has been live with, with A Higher Calling Fundraising Solutions. Reach out to us. We're ready to do your virtual galas, as you heard with Scott. We're ready to help you take whatever steps are, are necessary. If you can't get a hold of me, look up Scott. Scott's willing to help and work with people in the Florida. He works all over the United States. I, I encourage you reach out to that professional and we'll talk to you soon on the next, next one, which will be Thursday. You're going to love that content as well. Thanks for now. We'll sign off. Talk to you soon.